Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. I let go of old mindsets. I let go of old thought patterns. I engage myself in this process called the renewing of the mind. My mind is going to be renewed to the Word of God, and I am going to learn to think the thoughts of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore, begin to live the kind of life that God wants me to live, a no-boundaries kind of life. Hello and welcome to Adventures in Faith. I'm Carolyn Savell, and I'm so happy to have you here with me. This week, we're continuing part three of Jerry's four-part series, No Boundaries. As you watch this episode today, I want to remind you that God has not called you to live a normal life. No, everything God does is extraordinary and over the top, and He wants you to operate in that same capacity. As you start to live this kind of lifestyle, people around you are going to notice, and they'll notice because many have never seen a person live a limitless life. Much of our world is defined by limitation, and there may, may be some individuals, even those who are close to you, that won't be happy that you're experiencing something they're not. In this episode, Jerry shares how to handle circumstances that would try to deter you and how to persevere in this life of no boundaries. I encourage you to give this broadcast your undivided attention. If you will, I promise you'll hear something that has the capability of changing your life forever. Watch this and I'll see you afterwards. John chapter 17 and verse 14, Jesus says, I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And then he repeats this statement in verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. On the previous broadcast, we read the message translation, which states, they are no more defined by this world than I am defined by this world. And we discovered that the word defined means not marked by its boundaries. Now, I think it's interesting that Jesus started this with, I have given them your word and the world hath hated them. You know, it's amazing how many people will despise you for not being normal. <laughs> it's amazing how many people get upset with you for not, you know, staying limited like they are. If they're limited, they want everybody to be limited. If they are confined, they want everybody to be confined. If, if they say it's, it's impossible, they want it to be impossible with everybody. And notice it says that the world will actually despise you for not being bound like they are. I've had that happen. But you know, it goes even deeper than just the world. I've had a lot of Christian people despise me because I wouldn't wallow around in that unbelief with them and stay negative with them. And I'm sure that many of you have had the same experience. But that's all right. You know, we just love on them and do our best to, to sow seed into them the Word of God, you know, and hopefully they'll, they'll make the changes like we did. But nevertheless, I am not going to stay bound and restricted just because somebody else doesn't like the way I live. Amen? I'm, I'm going to live the kind of life that I believe God planned for me, and if anybody has a problem with it, that's their problem. But I'm going to live this life, and I'm going to give God all the glory for it, and hopefully somebody will notice and want to, want to find out why I'm living this way, how I'm living this way, and then I can tell them about the God I serve. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So once again, here Jesus is telling us that when, when we become followers of Him, and to become a true follower of Him requires the new birth, Amen. to be born again. Jesus said that uh, man must be born again. That's what we call the new birth in the New Testament. And the Bible teaches us that when we experience the new birth, then we are no longer mere men. That's 1 Corinthians 3.13. We're no longer mere men. In other words, we're not like everybody else. We have something going for us that the world doesn't have. 
And it's the Christ within us, praise God, our hope of glory. It's Christ within us that enables us to do all things, to be able to do the impossible, no matter how impossible it might seem. So actually, being a believer gives you an advantage in life. Hallelujah. It gives you an advantage that the rest of the world uh, doesn't know anything about. But I'm, I, I know from my own life that there have been many people that I didn't preach one word to. They just watched this lifestyle, watched how I live, and wanted to know, how are you doing that? Where are you getting all this? And I'm able to tell them that it's the God I serve. It's His blessing on my life. It's the Word of God that has made the difference. And then they want to know my God. Hallelujah. They want to know this God that I serve. So once again, Jesus is telling us that we don't have to live limited, restricted lives. That we can live a life with no boundaries. Everybody say no boundaries. No boundaries. Look at your neighbor and tell them no boundaries. no boundaries. Amen. Now let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and get into some new material here today. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. This is Paul speaking. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Underline or highlight that phrase, forgetting those things which are behind. Why is that so important? Because if you keep hanging on to your past is going to have a negative effect on your future. A lot of people never break through because they can't let go of their past. They keep talking about the things that didn't happen. They keep talking about the things that couldn't happen. They keep talking about their inadequacies. And as long as you try to carry your past along with you, it's going to have a negative effect on your future. So Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind. And then notice he says, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So that tells me there's, there, there's something out there that I have not yet attained or obtained that God has in store for me. But in order to obtain it, I'm going to have to let go of the past. All right. Amen. Amen. See, if, if I kept hanging on to my past, because my past is not a beautiful past. How about yours? Uh, you know, uh, my daughters hear me say this in sermons, but they don't know this man. They never knew this man. But before I came to Christ, I was a quitter. I started college, first semester. Two weeks before the first semester was up, I quit. You know, and, and that, was just a, that was just a routine in my life. If it got hard, I quit. And then when I came to Christ, you know, and the first scripture I ever read was John chapter 8. And he said, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciple indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And that little word continue got as big as my Bible. It actually jumped out of the pages and into my heart. And the Lord said, this is the missing ingredient in your life. You're a great starter. You're a lousy finisher. You don't continue anything. And if you're ever going to be the husband that you need to be, you're going to have to develop the art of continuing. If you're ever going to be the father that you should be, you're going to have to develop the art of continuing. If you're ever going to be the preacher that I want you to be, then you're going to have to develop the art of continuing. In other words, learn to stick with it. Learn to press. Learn to persevere. I came up with this definition years later of what perseverance means. Outlast the devil. Amen. That's what perseverance is, just to outlast the devil. So, you know, to, to look at the way I live now and the kind of person I am now. My, my daughters only know a disciplined, no quit person. They've never seen me quit. They, they, they've never seen me anything but disciplined. That's the, that's the father they know because they were just babies when I got a hold of this. So when I talk about what a quitter I was, they, they can't even identify with that person. And I'm glad he's gone, praise God. Amen. Amen. He died the death of the cross, and a new species of being came into existence. Now, I became the way I am today by, by starting one day in the Word of God with a determination that I was going to gain the knowledge of God because I no longer wanted to just exist. I no longer wanted to just occupy space on this planet. 
I wanted to live the kind of life that God wanted me to live. And I wanted to make a mark and to show others that if God can do it for me, He can do it for them. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what I've been doing now for 46 years. So the first thing I had to do was let go of the past because I, I, I couldn't become the person God wanted me to be, the man God wanted me to be, the preacher God wanted me to be if I kept hanging on to that quitter mentality. So I had to break loose from that mindset. I had to br break loose from those thought patterns and so forth. So I had to let those things go and keep looking toward what God had in store. I love the way the message translation reads here. It says this, stick with me, friends. There are many out there taking other paths and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. You know, sometimes it also means cutting ties with some people. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 I mean, you know, if I, some of the people that were in my life back then, when I was first starting out, I realized even though they weren't bad people, they didn't mean bad, you know, but they just didn't know any better. And as long as I was around them, they kept trying to pull me down, kept, kept trying to pull me back. You know, some of the guys that, that uh, I ran with back then before uh, changing my life, uh, they knew how I was back then and they wanted me to be that person again. They didn't like this new person. You know, uh, I think because it put some of them under conviction themselves, even though I didn't ne I never condemned them. I never preached down to them. I never told them they're going to hell or anything like that. They just saw the change in me. And, and, and I think it brought conviction on them. So, you know, they were a little uncomfortable around me and I was no longer comfortable around them because we didn't talk the same language anymore. You know, we didn't, we didn't think the same. We didn't talk the same. We didn't act the same. And now I'm not living the same, praise God. So it meant in some cases I had to cut ties with some people, leave them behind as well as mindsets and thought patterns and so forth. So Paul says from the message, stick with me, friends. There are many out there taking other paths. Have you noticed just because you got up one day and decided you're going to walk with the Lord, not everybody in your family made the same choice? Not all your friends made the same choice. Amen. So Paul says there are many out there taking other paths and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. So I say it like this. If the advice you're hearing from others is designed to hold you back or keep you down or keep you failure minded, then you need to break ties with those people. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen. Pray for them. Maybe someday they'll come around. I know uh, uh, I was just back in Shreveport, Louisiana a few weeks ago. Of course, it's going to be uh, maybe months ago by the time this broadcast airs. And I was uh, invited to come and preach at the 75th anniversary of the church that my wife grew up in and the church where I first heard Kenneth Copeland preach a message that changed my life. And they asked me to come back and do the 75th anniversary. And you know, I saw people in the service that I knew 46 years ago. I saw people in the service that I knew 50 years ago. Who he, one person in particular, he and I were living much alike. You know, uh, the way we lived, our, our old self. And I remember when I came to the Lord, uh, the Lord really put this man on my heart, this young man. He was, we graduated from high school together. And he put him on my heart to pray for him. And it seemed like the more I prayed for him, the, the worse he got. He, he just became one of, the, one of the wildest people, most perverse people, you know. And it just looked like, boy, this guy's going exactly 180 degrees opposite of the way I'm going. But I wouldn't back off. I kept praying for him. I never preached to him, never condemned him. You know, if we came in contact with one another, you know, I, he, he, we'd talk a little bit, you know, and if he asked me what I was doing, I'd tell him, but I never preached to him or anything. But eventually I did let him know that I was praying for him. And one day we're in church, one night actually, a Sunday night in church. And the pastor got through preaching and he gave an invitation for everybody to come to the altar and just pray for a while. Just, 
he called it an altar service. And people came and they knelt down and they just prayed over various things. And some would walk around and pray with others. And Carol and I are on our knees praying. And all of a sudden I felt a hand on my shoulder. And I turned around and it was this young man. And he was crying. And he said, would you pray with me? And I said, sure, I'll pray with you. I led him to the Lord. And he got filled with the Holy Ghost that night. And, and when we stood up, we both embraced and cried for a few moments. And then he kind of pushed me back and he looked at me. He said, we got something to tell him now, don't we? And he and I became like Paul and Silas in the streets of our city. I mean, we won people to the Lord, drug addicts, alcoholics, prostitutes. I mean, we won people to the Lord left and right. And there was that guy in that service. And I hadn't seen him in years. And there he was in that service. And to think, he and I used to be a certain way, but look what the Word of God has done. Amen. 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 If He could do it for me, if He could do it for him, He could do it for anybody. Amen. Amen. But it doesn't happen automatically. You don't live a no boundaries kind of life automatically. It takes the Word of God. Amen. And when you find the Word of God giving you instructions like this, let go of the past then you do what James said, become a doer of the word. Don't just read that and then move on to the next chapter. Do it. I mean, consciously. If you have to stand up and look at, in, at yourself in the mirror and say, in the name of Jesus, you're letting go of your past. Your past is not going to prevent you from living the kind of future God wants you to live. Amen. 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 I let go of old mindsets. I let go of old thought patterns. I engage myself in this process called the renewing of the mind. My mind is going to be renewed to the Word of God. Amen. And I am going to learn to think the thoughts of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And therefore begin to live the kind of life that God wants me to live. Thank a no boundaries kind of life. You, Amen. In verse 20 of Philippians chapter 3, it says, For our conversation is in heaven, whom whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I like the way the message reads here. It says, there's far more to life for us. There's far more to life. And not just heaven, even though, praise God, we're looking forward to heaven. But that doesn't mean that this great life that God has in store for us, we only get to enjoy when we get to heaven. Right. Now, I believe Paul is saying, if you will let go of the past, and you'll keep focused on what God has in store, then you're going to find out there's far more to life than what you thought. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God has so much more in store. And then in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy, my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. The message translation says, Don't waver, stay on track, steady in God. Don't waver. Stay on track, steady in God. Say this with me. Don't waver. Don't waver. Stay, on track, stay on track and steady with God. Steady with God. Amen. Amen. That's the process that it takes to enter into this no boundaries kind of lifestyle. Once you make up your mind that you're going to gain the knowledge of the Lord, you're going to begin this process called the renewing of the mind that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 12. Then once you start that, you have to make the decision, I am not going to waver. I'm going to stay on track and I'm going to stay steady with God. Amen. 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 These, are, these are decisions that have to be made. If you don't make those decisions, then you're going to be tempted to give up nearly every day. Can you say amen? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. You'll be tempted to give up every day. So you just, have to, you just have to make the decision that I'm not going to waver in this. I'm going with God. I'm going to get full of the Word of God. I'm going to get my mind renewed. I'm going to learn how to live this no boundaries life. And I'm not giving up if every family member gives up, if every friend gives up, if every church member I know gives up. I will be the one that won't quit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You have to make that decision. And then you've got to back it with everything in you. Amen. Now, Psalm 37 verse 4, the message translation says this. Keep company with God and you'll get in on the best. Amen. Keep company with God and you will get in on the best. Amen. Life at its best is enjoyed by those that stick with Him and those that stick with His Word. 
I've, I've been in this now, you've heard me say it a number of times, 46 years. Do you have any idea how many people I've seen come and go? Do you know how many preachers I've seen come and go in 46 years? You know, and I have preached in over 3,500 churches in America alone. And some of those churches I have a very close relationship with. They, they, they receive me as an apostolic teacher to their congregation, so I go there annually, sometimes even more than once a year. And, and I, I have a habit of watching people in churches that I go to. I watch the people that shout the loudest. I watch the people who clap the loudest. I watch the people who jump and leap and run the most. And the next time I go back, I always look to see if they're still there. And most of the time, they're not. Most of the time, they're not. And some of whom the pastor would say, they've been with me now for 10 years. Well, I'm really going to watch for that person next time I go back. And many times, they're not there. And many times the pastor, I'll ask, Where, where's brother so-and-so? Well, you know, uh, he, he's not even walking with the Lord anymore. He, he's gone back into the world. Personally, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Other than apparently there was not a decision made. Don't waver, stay on track, steady with God. Amen. Don't waver, stay on track, steady in God. But if you keep company with God, Folks, you've already kept company with the world. What did it produce? <laughs> Amen? Death, destruction, failure, defeat. Amen? But if you keep company with God, you'll get in on the best. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 35, the message translation says, When you find me, you find life, real life. I love that. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21, the message translation says, Count on this. God's loyal people will triumph. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's loyal people will triumph. In other words, those that, that triumph are those that don't waver, stay on track, and steady with God. Amen. Amen. They're God loyal people. And they triumph. They live life at its best. The only way that a life of victory will escape you is when you refuse to believe his word and you choose to believe everybody else. Right. Proverbs 13, 13, the message translation says, ignore the word and you'll suffer. Amen. Ignore the word of God and there's a price. You'll suffer. You'll end up living just like the rest of the world. When they're losing everything, you'll be losing everything. When they're failing, you'll fail. When they're going under, you'll go under. But it doesn't have to be that way, praise God. Why? Because Jesus has made it possible for you to live a no boundaries kind of life. So I want to challenge you today to get in the word like never before. I've told you this ever since I preached on television. The first time I think I started television ministry in 1979. And I've encouraged people to get in the word, get in the word, get in the word. 46 years later, I have a new message. Get in the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And if you get in the Word and get your mind renewed to it, I'm telling you, life will be beyond anything that you could have ever imagined. The kind of life that God wants you to enjoy. So, I got a strong command for you before we go to our announcement. Get in the Word. Amen? Get in the Word. I'll be back in just a few moments. Why settle for the ordinary when you can have the extraordinary? Many Christians are spending their lives living beneath their privileges as children in God's family. However, as children of God, we are created for more. In No Boundaries, Jerry Savelle reveals the unseen limits that have been holding you back from the life you are destined for. You will discover how to recognize boundaries, what makes you different from a limited world, 
the origins and causes of boundaries, proven keys to living life free from negative boundaries, and more. When you request today, you'll also receive the four CD set, Breaking Through the Impossible. Many are facing impossible situations, but God has a plan of victory for you. In this teaching, Jerry Savelle reveals the steps you must take to experience God's breakthrough power in your life. You have been created to live life more abundantly, so don't wait. Call or visit jerrysavelle.org to request this powerful combo today and live a life free from the negative boundaries trying to hold you back. Living a life of no boundaries doesn't happen automatically, but starts with a decision to focus on the Word of God. As you respond to what the Word instructs you, letting go of the past or what people think, you become a doer of the Word. So say this with me today, my past does not define my future. Say that, my past does not define my future. And as we renew our minds to the Word and what God says about us, we let go of old mindsets and start to think the way Christ thinks. With that in mind, I want to mention this month's special offer, which includes the No Boundaries book and our four-part CD series entitled Breaking Through the Impossible. As you read the No Boundaries book, you will see the importance of changing the way you think and the way you live your life. Don't settle for anything less than God's best. In breaking through the impossible, you will learn that what's impossible to men is not impossible with God. The word impossible isn't even in God's vocabulary. So take advantage of this special offer by visiting us at jerrysavelle.org and ordering these resources today. Now it's time to read some testimonies from those of you who have written to our ministry. These are some wonderful testimonies. In December of 2023, I sowed $1,000 into Jerry Savelle Ministries International, believing for a husband and for my business to flourish. I'm happy to report that I brought my new husband to the Southwest Believers Convention this year and that my business is booming. So we praise God with Patricia for this testimony and for this answered prayer. Kim from Michigan, I'm excited to share this praise report. I ask your ministry to pray with us for the resources and the right people to renovate our home. And God answered our prayers. Our entire home is getting a makeover from the roof to the carpets, including our shed and our porches. I am overflowing with gratitude and praises for God's goodness. Kim, I rejoice with you over this renovation. So this is the testimonies we have today. So I love to hear from you. I love to hear what the Lord is doing in each of your lives. And it blesses me greatly to have you share these precious testimonies with us. So I wanna give you special mention to the people who continue to support our ministry and endeavors, our partners, everything we do, from our outreaches to our missions and even this television broadcast are made possible by your generosity and your love. Thank you for sowing into us and into God's kingdom. And thank you for joining me this week and next week, we will conclude this series with part four of No Boundaries. Until then, remember this, your faith will overcome the world.